Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana, and I'm a little bit exhausted from pulling weeds and mowing the lawn at the new house, but no time for rest. There's Nerf news! We start this week with something Michelle's been trying to do on and off for years now. Here is an early attempt at a cheap DIY chronograph she made and published. Saturnus is an open source chronograph designed by LEGO DEI. He has started a Kickstarter which is fully funded already in order to produce and sell kits and fully assembled chronographs. Michelle backed this as soon as she heard about it. The chronograph uses an Arduino and active infrared sensors to measure the speed of darts. It's extremely portable and the open design will allow for any type of ammo to be measured. However, according to the creator, it will not work well outdoors, which, while unfortunate, is a small price to pay for such great functionality at a low cost. For just $35, you can get a fully assembled unit, or for $25, you can get a starter kit to solder yourself. Those are Kickstarter prices, and there's no word on if prices will go up. Hopefully, such a cheap and available chronograph will finally kill off pain tests once and for all. One can dream. This should also make it way easier for modders to self-regulate their blasters before an event and avoid a dreaded shooting too high incident. Nothing is worse than spending hours tuning a blaster only to have to use a loner because it hits too hard. That's very sad. Check out the Kickstarter linked below if you're interested. The Icon series is no longer rumor. Both the Stampede and the Mag Strike are showing up on shelves and are listed on Target's website. The Stampede comes with two 18 round clips and a shield. However, there is no bipod or third clip like the original, which is kinda sad considering the $80 price tag. Ouch. Pictures of the blaster still show it saying ECS 50 on the side, even though it only comes with the magazines for 36 rounds. It's honestly a shame that Hasbro didn't include the 50 round drum with this blaster as that's what it was supposed to come with since day one. The Mag Strike looks to be a direct re-release of some of the later models of Mag Strikes that were on the shelves before they were discontinued. Buyer beware on these though. Gavin Fuzzy got his hands on one in Singapore and it's faulty. It only fires one or two darts and is incapable of firing the entire clip without pumping up the air tank again. So if you buy one of these, be sure to test it in the parking lot before you leave so you don't have to drive all the way back to the store to do an exchange. It will be interesting to see what else Hasbro does with this line. We do know the Element EX6 will be returning to shelves thanks to this box picture from Redditor PiggyJJ. But why the Element EX6? Does anyone even like that one? No. I didn't think so. Let's say you just got a 3D printer. What do you do first? There are so many community-made parts and blasters and remixes. How are you supposed to choose? Do you start out with the Caliburn because you know the instructions are so easy to follow? Do you try something with lots of electronics and code required like the FDL? Do you try that one you saw on Reddit but you can't remember the name of it so you'll just scroll back far enough and hope you'll see it again, this library will make your choice way harder. <laughs> there are so many community-made blasters, it's just insane. But having access to all the files in one place is amazing. Thank you to Hawkeye007 for compiling this list, to the editors for keeping it updated, and especially the creators for giving it so much content. If you made something yourself or you notice something is missing from the list, you can request access to edit and help keep this document alive. I think this is a much better solution than we've had in the past where you just post to Reddit or Facebook and then it gets lost in the timeline and it's so hard to find the links to the files again. Now when you need to access the files, they're just a click away. Speaking of 3D printed blasters, there's a new one. Redditor Rajar has posted his creation on Reddit. It is heavily influenced by the Spring Thunder, but was created to use existing and way easier to access hardware for Europeans. It takes slightly larger shells, which gives it slightly more options for shells. There's one, two, and three dart shells, which can take double those numbers if you decide to use half-length darts. There's a mega dart and a four-round rival shell as well. 
There's some other improvements with the blaster relating to the priming bars and some of the mechanisms inside. He is hoping to release the files soon after just a little bit more fine tuning. Oh, and that gator on the front of the blaster is so cute. I want one. We've always said to be very careful with black painted blasters, but this week there was an incident where we learned they may not even be safe in your home. The police were called to a residence in Dayton, Ohio, where they confiscated several black painted Nerf blasters and other black toy weapons. I have no idea what led the police to be called to this house in the first place, but it does go to show that we need to be extra careful if we decide to make our toys look like real weapons, regardless of if we plan to keep them indoors or not. We heard almost a year ago that Lytake was working on a cheaper version of katanas, and it was hinted at that Worker could be making them for Lytake. We figured this is how we got talents. This week, a Lytake rep posted images of the new Worker Terminator with an unknown magazine in the blaster. It looks like it's the same geometry as katanas, but with some minor differences. The slit down the side of the mag is shorter, and there's some edge detail on the corner edges of the mag that are not present on real katanas. We personally don't think Light Take will move forward with the design, since talons are so prevalent and cheap, and there's no reason for a cheaper clone of Katanas at this point, since talons just better in almost every way. Still, it's really interesting to see these prototypes. The new Dart Zone Pro Blaster is supposed to be revealed next week, but it seems the Dart Zone website is not very secure, and Reddit user Supavaporian was able to browse through all of the images hosted there including ones that are not yet public. So let's get into what we've learned through these image leaks. First, it's a pump grip retaliator-esque blaster with breakdown capability. It has takedown pins to separate the upper and lower, but it's unclear if that's intended to easily swap parts or just for nicer transport and storage. The priming bars are internal, which I love, and there's a lot of Picatinny real estate up top, and a bunch of features that I'm hopeful for. I am crossing my fingers that a lot of the parts can be swapped out. I would love to be able to change out both grips and the stock to whatever has the most comfort for me because that may be different from what someone else thinks is comfortable. Overall, I'm really pleased with how it looks and almost relieved that they didn't create something entirely new. We know the retaliator-like platform works really reliably and performs well. So I'm very excited to get one of these in hand. But first, what's the price? We'll likely learn that next week. This week's Mod of the Week is a homemade blaster from Reddit user Parabellum1262. It's a repeating crossbow made primarily from wood and PVC, and heavily inspired by Van Helsing's crossbow. Nothing on the blaster other than the magazine is from Hasbro. It's all custom made. The performance seems to be about on par with stock nerf blasters, if not a little better, as you can see in his firing demo from a previous version that he made. I especially like the cheek rest. It looks super nice. The fit and finish of this blaster is overall much nicer than what we typically see in homemades. And it's powered like a real crossbow in the sense the string is not elastic. The bow arms flex to store energy when they're primed. Super cool. Monkeytron Collective takes video of the week. It's a teaser for the yearly Battle of Brit Nerf hosted in the UK next weekend. Three days of Nerf sounds really exciting. It looks like this year it will be hosted in an outdoor airsoft arena and it's sure to provide an awesome CQB experience. I'm pretty jealous I can't be there for a weekend of camping and Nerf camaraderie, but at least I can live vicariously through the footage I'll get to see in a couple of weeks. I'm hoping to see some more awesome smoke bomb shots, too. This is the outro! We made it! I checked my microphone, it's new, thank you Luke, and it's still recording. So that's good, hopefully this turns out right and we don't need to do it again. <sighs> Leave a comment if the sound is better, or worse, either way, please tell me. I don't know these things. Michelle might, but I don't. What are the things? Subscribe, thumbs up, and... See you next week, Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Nailed it.